Hi everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to Tread Talks, where you would typically see me walking on a treadmill while making videos for you fine people. But sometimes life is busy and you don't have time to do a full-fledged review. But at the same time, I want to share my thoughts with you about a movie I just saw. So here's my mini-review of Thor Ragnarok. I went into the movie expecting the worst and hoping for the best. The first two Thor movies were mediocre at best, and I was worried that in this change in tone that I saw in the trailers to a more humorous take on the character, that they were going to end up being more like Guardians of the Galaxy, and I remember that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 had a lot of humor that just missed with me. But to put it simply, Thor Ragnarok exceeded my expectations. In the beginning of the movie, I was a little bit underwhelmed because there was some humor that was happening in a context where it didn't seem appropriate. But then once Thor gets to the place where he ends up fighting the Hulk, it's a place that, for lack of a better way to put it, is zany. And so at that point, the humor starts to click. And then from that point forward, the humor works throughout the rest of the movie. I also like that it wasn't as filled with pop culture references as Guardians of the Galaxy 2, some of which seem shoehorned into that film. Here, most of the humor comes organically from the new characters that are introduced and from the mixing of established characters in new and interesting ways. I think Chris Hemsworth does a great job in this new take on Thor, where the Shakespearean attempt at drama is dropped in favor of a lighter tone that I think is finally the take on the character that makes him interesting. And this also works really well for Loki, who's always been playing it straight as a Shakespearean actor in this drama, but now the mischief that's happening around him blends well with what he brings to the table. On top of that, the action sequences work as well as you might expect, and that fight between Thor and Hulk, I thought it was spoiled for me in the trailers, but it actually goes well beyond what we see there, and it was entertaining to watch. The Hulk himself takes about five minutes to get used to, and once you understand what this character is like, since we've never heard him really speak before, but when you realize that basically he's like a child that could kill you, the humor starts to work. I also like that they made the Hulk a little bit vulnerable. He's not always angry all the time. You start to see some of the reasons for that anger, and if your theater is anything like mine, it'll elicit an, aww, poor guy, from the audience. Jeff Goldblum is excellent. Every time his character was on screen, it was entertaining. Every bit of his line delivery works with the setting, and I hope that this isn't the last time that we see the character. And Tessa Thompson was an excellent addition. Her chemistry with Thor and with the Hulk is excellent, and on her own, she's an interesting character that you want to root for. Okay, here's what doesn't work. Once again, we have another villain that isn't quite up to snuff. We have Kate Blanchett, or Blanchett. Blanchette. I think it's Blanchette. She does her best to bring life to a character that is otherwise kind of boring, but ultimately it falls flat, and so every time that the movie shifts away from Thor and Hulk and where they are at over to Kate Blanchette and what's happening on Asgard, you immediately think, no, I, I want to go back there. I want to go back where the fun is. And when I get that feeling while watching a movie, that's an immediate sign to me that there's a big component that doesn't work. There's also a character played by Carl Urban that feels like he was shoehorned into the movie. It would have worked if they tweaked his character so he was just some sniveling person trying to survive in the midst of this attack by this villain, but instead they try to elevate him to some right-hand man status, and it doesn't make sense why Kate Blanchett, or Hela, I should just say Hela, it's easier to say, it doesn't make sense why Hela would choose this person right after getting to Asgard, and the only explanation that works is that they wanted to do something with that character. But ultimately it falls flat. And I do also have to say that although the movie is over two hours long, it certainly doesn't feel that way, and in fact it feels like some of the earlier scenes where some more dramatic things are happening. It feels like it goes by way too quickly. Some scenes that should have some real emotional impact as certain characters come to a close ends up being little more than just a few lines of dialogue. So in the end, Thor Ragnarok abandons the attempts at drama of the earlier movies and takes itself less seriously, and we as the audience benefit from it. It's an improvement over Thor's 1 and 2, and it's a great new direction for this series. And because of that sheer entertainment factor, I give Thor Ragnarok 3.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, so that was Thor Ragnarok, and now I want to know. It seems like these Marvel movies are converging toward a more humorous take across all their series. Do you like that, or do you want to return to the more dramatic days where it seems like the humor was there to punch the script up a little bit, but not exactly the focus of the events that are unfolding? Whatever you think, leave me a comment, I want to know. And beyond that, if you like this video and you want to keep up with my content, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and it would be great if you were a part of that group. 
and hit the little bell icon to be notified when a new video goes up. Either way, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.